In today's video, I'm gonna show you a macro-friendly snack, the dark chocolate covered chickpea crunch, and I'm sure you're going to love it. Let's go. So we're in the kitchen now, I'm gonna show you the ingredients for this recipe, and it's actually so simple, it's crazy. It's only got two ingredients, free as an optional, and I'm gonna show you them right now. Okay, so obviously we've got the chickpeas. We're gonna have two tins of these chickpeas. Then we've got this dark chocolate, no added sugar dark chocolate that I found in my supermarket. It was a lot low in calories, so I knew that this was the go-to to make this recipe. And yeah, like it's crazy how macro-friendly it is because yeah, no added sugar, it's dark chocolate. And then the optional that I mentioned was stevia. The base recipe that I'm gonna try is just going to be using the chickpeas and the chocolate. But I, will get, I am gonna try half a batch of adding in some stevia for some extra sweetness, just because it is no added sugar, so it may be a bit bitter, and chickpeas aren't known for being that sweet. And yeah, we'll see how we're going and compare both and let you know which one is the go-to recipe for you to try. So I'm pretty excited to try this recipe because I came across a snack this year by the Happy Snack Company. I'll show you a little image here. About, it's, it's basically like a dark chocolate or even there was a milk chocolate covered chickpea snack and I found it actually quite nice and quite delicious and a great way to feel like you're getting a sweet snack but getting a big fiber hit and a bit of protein as well. So I wanted to replicate that as much as I could. So then I just grabbed the base ingredients that I thought would work well for this recipe and start creating this and see how we go. So I do hope it comes out quite nice. It's gonna be something that I can go to and something that you can use as a go-to snack that's macro-friendly, higher in protein, very filling because of the fiber, but also, also whole food based because as we know, legumes, chickpeas, that sort of stuff is a great addition to any diet. Okay, so the first step is very, very simple. All you gotta do is get a colander, and you're just going to drain out these two tins of chickpeas, okay? Nice and simple. Give it a good rinse, okay? Always give it a good rinse. Have fun with it, okay? It's always good to have fun in the kitchen. <laughs> okay, so now that we've rinsed it out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use paper towels. Now, obviously you can use a tea towel, it's gonna to be a lot better. Um, I'm gonna see if I have a tea towel ready because it's gonna be a lot easier, but you can obviously use paper towels, a few of those are gonna help. Just shake it up, okay? Get as much water gone as possible, okay? Now we get these ready because all we're going to do is got to squeeze out all the liquids because what we're going to do is roast these, okay? We're going to roast these in the oven uh, for about, I, I like to go 180 degrees for when I'm doing roast chickpeas, 180 degrees for about 45 minutes to an hour depending on your oven. So we're going to see how we go with that. I'm going to just show you the, the, um, the finished product once it's roasted up anyway. We're just going to get some tea towels, or paper towels, whatever you want to call them. And you might lose some chickpeas, but that's just one of the realities. Put some of that one on, lose them. In retrospect, this would have gone a lot better with a tea towel. I might actually grab a tea towel. Okay, bear with me, I'll grab a tea towel and go from there. Okay, we're back, we've got it on the tea towel. A much wiser decision, okay? Don't do what I do and try the paper towel method. It just went everywhere, it wasn't really that nice, and it's just not a good idea. So what we do is we pat this dry, okay? We want to get this all nice and dry, and if you can, remove some of the loose skins that break off, okay? Any of the skins that break off like this, just take them off, okay? Take them off, chuck them aside. You want to kind of avoid those as much as you can when you're trying to roast this up, just to give it a nice texture when you're mixing it through with the chocolate. Okay, so... Now this, it will be a pain to do because as you can see, it's a lot of fricking chickpeas. But you gotta do it to get the reward, right? Okay, no pain, no gain. <laughs> so just do your best. Don't have to worry too much about it. Keep drying it, okay? Keep patting it dry because it, 
It needs to be nice and dry for when you're roasting chickpeas. Otherwise, they're not gonna come out as crispy as you want them. And remember, this snack is a nice, crispy, texturized snack that's gonna give you a bit of a chocolate hit with a bit of fiber, but you don't want it to be soggy. You want it to be nice and crispy. So just go and remove any of the skins. I tend to be an impatient person sometimes, so I'll see how I go, whether I take off all the skins I see or whether I just risk it for the biscuit, as they say. Just remove all the skins as much as you can, toss them around, move them around. Oop. Don't lose any chickpeas, that's all that fiber gone. Okay, if you lose a chickpea, you lose some fiber. Okay. Had to remove some of the skin. So as you can see, this is a tedious process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop it here and I'm gonna get to it when it's nice and layered on the tray to go. A few moments later. Okay, after a longish, tedious time, deshelling those, drying those out, we have got them on the tray ready to go. So what we're gonna do now is you just preheat an oven to about 180, 200 degrees. I like to go 180 just to be on the safer side. So 180, fan forced oven, whatever. And he's gonna pop these in there for about 45 minutes to an hour. But what you're gonna do is every 15 minutes to, uh, to 20 minutes, you're gonna go in there and just gonna shake them up a bit, stir them around just to make sure they cook properly, okay? And cook the way you need them to cook. So then after this, we're gonna get back and we're gonna do the rest of the recipe and show you how to get the chocolate goodness in and go from there, okay? Talk soon. One hour later. Okay, so after an hour and shaking it here and there, this is what we've come up with. Some nice roasted chickpeas. So what I'm gonna do now is gonna put them in a bowl, show you exactly how to prepare the next step and go from there. Okay, so now what I've done is I've separated about half half so I can try the one with sweet nut. Oh yeah, the alternative sweet nut one with not. Now while this is still hot, what you gotta do is you gotta put in the 80 grams of dark chocolate. So it's two tins and 80 grams, so 40 grams each. So break that in there while it's still hot. I'm hoping it's still hot enough. And you basically just mix that, okay? Just mix it and get it. And get it moving, okay? You see the chocolate melting there. Oop, don't want to lose any of that crunchy goodness. Now, alternatively, what you can do, especially if you struggle with this, is you can actually melt it in the microwave first. So put in the chocolate for about 30 seconds or so to give it a bit more of a melty feel straight away. But as you can see, even with waiting just a little bit, this is going exactly the way I want it to go. Okay. Get it all melty. Nice and uniform. Okay, this one's looking nice and good. This one's pretty much ready. This is gonna be the one I'm gonna put the actual sweetener in. And let's just get this one nice and melted as well. There we go, it's looking good. It's smelling good too as well. There we go, all nearly melted. Now there's different ways that you can do this for the next step is you can actually do it as little piles like that like little like piles on like a sheet and put that in the fridge or what you can do is just put it into a tupperware container so you can shake it up later make it nice and loose or you can just leave it in one of these like this and then shake it up later with a spoon or whatever doesn't really matter do what you prefer and how you prefer to eat it there we go that's all pretty much done that's, that's all off there so we're going to do now is put some sweetener. Now I'm not going to measure this like usually I'll try and build about five grams at least. I'm usually pretty good at measuring that so just just a little bit there just to give us some sweetness. But obviously I do encourage you to grab yourself a food scale, okay? Grab yourself a food scale and actually measure out the sweetener and do it to your taste like I said. 
This is just to see if there's much difference in terms of the, the flavor when I add a bit of sweetness, considering that the dark chocolate that I use is a low calorie, no sugar option. There we go, that's nice and ready to go. So what we're gonna do now is, I'm gonna pop these in the fridge for about 30 minutes. Okay, pop it in the fridge for about 30 minutes. That should be enough to get them more solid, <laughs> for lack of a better word, more solid. And then we can do a taste test and see what we think. Okay. Okay, we're back and we've got the two batches ready to go. We've got the one with the sweetener and the one without the sweetener. So what we're gonna do now is give it a taste test, see if there's much difference between these, but most importantly, answer the question, do they actually even taste good? Okay, because the ones that I'm talking about as you can get from the supermarket, they're very, very nice, they're very delicious. But we wanna see if we can make a homemade, lower calorie version that's just as good. So let's go, let's tuck in and see how we go. So the first one I'll try is this one here, which is the one with the sweetener. So I'm gonna show you what it kind of looks like. So you see it will clump up, hopefully you can see that properly. It will clump up to the little bits like this. You could, you could potentially maybe even shake it up in the Tupperware container. I'm not gonna worry about doing that now, but you can shake it up potentially in the Tupperware container to break it up into little balls if that's what you prefer. But you can obviously just break it off into pieces like this. You can layer it into little bunches onto a sheet of, um, like a lined sheet and put it in the fridge as well. Doesn't really matter. World's your oyster, do what you prefer. But without further ado, let's give this a taste test. Hmm. It's as if I can taste the little granules of the sweetener and it's gone like extra crunchy. Not the greatest texture, in my opinion, not the greatest texture, but not too bad. Uh, keep in mind, I did put it in the free, uh, in the freezer just for just for like about ten minutes or so, just to speed this up a bit. It may be different if it's just in the in the fridge. But in terms of actual taste, it's actually not too bad. Chickpeas are quite crunchy. Borderline, like maybe I uh, could have tried it with forty five minutes. Maybe that would have made a slightly bit of difference. I'm not too sure. Overall, still pretty okay. I just feel like you can taste the little granules of, of sweetener a bit too much for my liking. But let's try this one here, which is the one with the after sweetener. Mmm, this one's a lot better. Surprisingly, the one without the sweetener, just because of the texture, is a lot better. So this is actually quite nice. It's different slightly because it's in a bunch compared to what I'm used to, which is like in little individual chickpea balls. But this is actually very, very good. Mm. Nice crunch. The chocolate flavor is definitely there. Being that it's dark chocolate as well, it's got that really strong chocolatey flavor as well, so that's really nice. Mmm, this is quite nice. Next time I try it, I'll probably try it by cooking the chickpeas just a bit shorter. Okay, because they came out quite crunchy, which is not a bad thing, but potentially if we just cut back the, the time, maybe by 10 minutes or so, it would have been a bit more of a, not a softer texture, that's not what you want, but it's not as crispy crunchy. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> but overall, for what it is, for the calories that are in it, which is, so I'm gonna give you a little breakdown now. Based on what a single portion is on those ones, the Happy Snack Company ones you can get from the store, which they say is a serve is a 20 gram serve, that gives you about 100 calories, of which about two grams or so is protein, not much. About eight so grams is carbs and about five to six grams of fat. These ones here, per 20 gram serve, are actually only 70 calories. Protein and carbs are much in the muchness, but it's only about two or so grams of fat, a lot lower in saturated fat, all that sort of stuff. It's a lot better choice for you health-wise than the ones from the store. Now the ones in the store are still very healthy snack, in itself, don't get me wrong, but this one definitely is about 30 calories less. Now, in the grand scheme of things, does 30 calories make a huge difference for you? Nah, that'll leave that to you to decide. But all in all, if you want just saying, if you've got some chickpeas in the house, you wanna grab some dark chocolate and just make this yourself, feel free to do it. Probably a great snack to bring for like a Christmas party. You can make like little designs, you can do all that kind of stuff. Maybe even throw in some different little things in there to make it interesting, you know? 
If you're cooking it for kids or just for anyone, it doesn't really matter. We all love a little bit of variety in our diet. So it's a really good choice in that regard. I would personally not recommend you add the sweetener to it, at least from what I've done in this first batch. The sweetener just doesn't add the texture that I particularly enjoy. I would go with the one without the sweetener. It's got enough flavor there to get you going. You'll be perfectly okay with it, I'm sure. Give it a go, see what you think. And yeah, in all in all, 70 calories for a protein, like a slightly you know higher protein snack compared to other and the unhealthier snacks or whatever. And just for the amount of fiber that's in this, that's the main selling point here. It's a chocolate hit with the fiber. That's the real big thing here. It's a winner in my eyes. I reckon it's a real good winner. So I want you to give it a go. I want you to post your creations on Instagram or Facebook or whatever and tag me at The Climbing Dietitian. I want to see what you've made and let me know it below. Comment below, okay? And let me know, does this recipe sound appealing to you? Or if you've tried it, tell me how you, how you went, okay? Did you enjoy it yourself? I'll be interested to hear what you say. But yeah, definitely, this is a good snack. Great for now that we're coming to the festive season for like a healthy alternative that people are not gonna even know that it's an unhealthy, that it's a healthier version of something. They're gonna think it's like a chocolatey crunch. Hence, I called it the dark chocolate chickpea crunch. Whatever you wanna call it, it doesn't really matter. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed today's recipe. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe, stay in the loop for all the recipes that are coming and all the recipes that are already released that I'm sure you're gonna love. And if you like what you see today, hit that like button, okay? Show me some love, show that you this video has been a winner for you. Stay classy, I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.